Throughout the 1930s, there were great leaps made in the world of commercial aviation. In a few short years, the obsolescent trimotor designs of Ford and Fokker, with their fixed undercarriages and their generally idiosyncratic appearances, were replaced by an all-new generation of stressed skin all-metal monoplanes, with performance that even surpassed fighter aircraft in service at the time. One aircraft in particular perfectly encapsulates this transition of technology, a twin-engine all-metal monoplane featuring an impressive cruise speed of 300 km per hour, this craft first flew in the mid-1930s. To the surprise of some of my viewers who have not read the title or thumbnail of this video, this aircraft is not the iconic Douglas DC-3, it, it is the Block MB-220, a French design with quite a fascinating history, which flew within six months of its more famous counterpart. The story of this aircraft starts with that of another non-civilian aircraft, the Block MB-210, a twin-engine bomber designed for the Army de la Air in the early 1930s. A moderate success, it eventually went on to equip 12 bomber units in the French Air Force by the start of World War II. It was also used by the Vichy and German forces later in the conflict. Bloch, no doubt seeing the emergence of modern passenger designs across the Atlantic, decided to make a version of the 210 for carrying passengers as opposed to barrels of explosive debt. Um, the engineers at Block took the wings and tail from the earlier MB-210 and mated them to a newly designed fuselage for carrying passengers. Thus, the MB-220 was born, and she made her first flight on the 11th of June 1936 with test pilot André Corval at the controls. The MB-220 had a wingspan of 22.82 metres, a total length of 19.59 metres, and a height of 6 metres on the production versions of the aircraft. This made the 220 roughly in the same size category as the DC-3, which has a wingspan of 29 metres, a length of 19.7 metres, and a height of 5.16 metres. Being slightly smaller in all dimensions, bar height, the MB-220 has had an empty weight of 6,160 kilograms, which was significantly lighter than DC-3's empty weight of 7,650 kilograms. The MB-220 could also carry far less passengers relative to the DC-3. At most, the 220 could accommodate 16 passengers in opulent luxury, while the DC-3 in its civilian form could accommodate 21 to 32 passengers depending on the level of comfort in the cabin, of course. This puts the Block 220 into roughly the same pass passenger capacity range as the earlier Douglas DC-2, the DC-3's less famous predecessor. The DC-2 could carry 14 passengers, as opposed to the Block 220's 16. The 220's max payload, this includes fuel, passengers, luggage, etc., was 3,340 kilograms while the DC-2, being a slightly smaller aircraft, could only manage a max payload of 2,791 kilograms. However, even when compared to the DC-2, the Block 220 comes up lacking in some other areas. For example, the DC-2 could, could, could cruise slightly faster at 310 kilometers per hour, while the 220 could only manage 300 kilometers per hour. This is despite the fact that the DC-2 first flew two years before the 220 in May of 1934. The reason for the Block 220 being slightly subpar was the choice of engine. The 220 used two Gnome Rhon 14N engines, which were, to put it politely, a little lacking. A 14-cylinder twin-row radial engine, the 14N was used on many French interwar aircraft including the Farman F2220 and Leo 45 bombers, and the Block MB152 fighter aircraft. It even went on to power the impressive Messerschmitt ME323, as German engineers used captured stocks of the engine, so as not to hinder their already strained production system. The Gnome Rhone 14N had a power output of 870 kilowatts at takeoff, and 630 kilowatts at cruise, which compares favourably against the Wright or 1820 Cyclone, the engine which powered the DC-2 
and early versions of the DC tree. However, compared to the Pratt & Whitney or 1830 twin wasp engine, which powered most DC trees, um, it comes up rather poorly. This engine had a power output of 890 kilowatts on takeoff, but a typically lower 520 kilowatt setting at cruise settings. The Gnome Roan 14N appears somewhat inferior in certain critical performance aspects when compared to the Twin Wasp. Uh, this unfortunately led to the Block 220 having inferior performance to its American equivalents. Sixteen aircraft were ordered by Air France, bringing the total number of aircraft built to 17, when one includes the prototype. These 16 aircraft entered service in 1937, flying their first commercial flight on the 20th of July that year. Initially, the 220 was only used on Air France's domestic route from Paris to Marseille. However, by 1938, the block design was being used on international routes in Europe. The first of these, from the Bourget Airport outside of Paris to Croydon Airport in the UK, started in March of 1938. The 220 featured all manner of luxuries for the passengers on board. Pullman-style seats with fully adjustable backs, a novelty for 1930s passengers, and fold-down trays for meals were outfitted to Air France's 220 fleet. In addition, the cabin was soundproofed and adequately heated, which must have been a welcome change for many passengers of the era. When World War II commenced in September 1939, all 17 Block 220s built were unceremoniously seized by the French Army de la Air to serve as transports hauling troops and vital war supplies around France and her colonies at the time. After France fell to Hitler in the mid-1940, the 220s found new homes in both Lufthansa and the Luftwaffe, hauling both civilian and military cargo alike. The Vichy government under Marshal Pétain also used the type for similar purposes. It also appears from my research that later in the war the Free French forces fighting with the Allied powers captured a handful of the type, using them to aid their war effort against the Axis forces in Europe. Six aircraft survived six years of war and were again used by Air France in the immediate post-war period. However, here our story takes a somewhat ironic twist. These machines were re-engined with the Wright Cyclone engines post-war. To be more specific, the OR-1820-97 variant, which powered both the DC-2 and early DC-3. These re-engined aircraft, now designated as the MB-221, saw use with Air France on short-haul flights throughout the war-shattered remains of Europe in the immediate post-war period. In 1949, four of the 221s were sold to SANA, the French Air Navigation Authority. These aircraft were, were retired from service in the early 1950s, as many war surplus C-47s, the DC-3 military's version, were on the market at the time. Sadly, it seems that all Block 220s and 221s were scrapped by the mid to late 1950s, this honestly makes me quite sad, as the 220 was a unique airplane with a small but special place in the history books. In 1938, French President Edouard Dadelier flew on a Block 220 to Munich to sign the ill-fated Munich Agreement with Hitler. This allowed Hitler to annex the Czech Sudetenlands, but ultimately did not prevent World War II. The 220 was also developed into, strangely enough, a tri-motor design the Block MB-3000 Pacific, but however this is a story for another video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.